David, I want to go back to the postdoc situation because I'm going to be interviewing in the next, over the next 26 weeks, uh, every other week, one of your leading scientists. And you're you have terrific to, people. You're going to have fun. I'm expecting I'm to, frankly. You. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I, I'll, I'll come back if you don't deliver. Right. I'll come back to you. <laughs> okay. But I expect you won't have any problems okay. there. But I, I've noticed in reading and preparing for this that you, it's, as you described, they go through the system here in, in, in Israel or right through Hebrew University. The brilliant students get their PhDs, then they go abroad for postdocs. Right. Very different than the pattern in North America where they jump around from institute to institute, and every institute has postdocs from all over the world. Here it's different because you send them abroad, they go abroad for two years, four years, six years, come back, the best of the best, and then you have them here. Uh, one of the things I s look at it, and I look at your labs, and look at who's in your labs, you don't have a lot of postdocs here. Sure. And I assume that's a matter of what, money? Two, two things. One, okay. one is money, two is uh, the country. I mean, it's very difficult. I mean, if you, are, if you are a student in the United States, you're just finishing your PhD, and you have to choose in which country to live for two years, Israel is not the first place that you would think on. I mean, it's a language. I mean, in the lab, obviously, all, all the work is being done in, in English. All, uh, the, the seminars and so on, that's, that's English. But, uh, but uh, in the street, it's mainly Hebrew. He, unless he will be a Jew that really wants to spend some time in Israel, he, will, he probably wouldn't choose to, to go to Israel with all the tension, with everything that he may hear on, you know, he will be reluctant to, to come. But you the other thing, no, no wait okay, a minute, the okay. other thing is, as you pointed out, is, is, is money to offer a good postdoctoral position, you need probably three times as much fund as to employ, a, to give a, a stipend to a PhD student. So it's also a question of funds from the lab. I believe that if we would have available funds, which we don't for this purpose, we could initiate a, a, a program for postdoctoral studies. We do have one, by the way. It's not that we don't have postdoctoral. No, no, I saw I some. I in my lab uh, people from, a uh, student from Nigeria and one from Germany. So it, it does happen, and, and other people did has, as well. But it is uh, rare, as you said, that's strong. Well, I, I can see the image because people think of Israel as having all these problems because of what's in the news. But if you're here, you, you know. That's fine. You don't even notice it. Right. Uh, well, it's much safer than, than the United States, <laughs> for sure. But the dynamism here and the creativity and the intellectual excitement is very attractive to any academic. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and I think not just Jewish academics. And so I think it's also a matter of reaching out with money. And I think it's important that people give money for a global attraction to the best scholars in the world to be postdocs here because you have a lot to give and uh, so my own advice but that's well, a separate I agree. I agree. <laughs> it's not I should be interviewing you instead of no, preaching it's <laughs> <laughs> in any case um, one of the d dynamics of, of complex uh, inst institutions which is the same as the complexity of the body is you have anarchism uh, people don't want to go t to these larger systems and contribute because it's, they want to just do their job and they resent it. How do you handle the politics? Since you're not trained in politics, you come as a scientist, but there's inevitably political problems in every, I mean, it's not just TB University, it's everywhere. Yeah. How do you handle it here? Well, you have to convince people that, it, that, that it's worth it. In order for someone to contribute to the system, he has to understand and he has to realize, he has to be shown that it's worth it. And uh, eventually he will see it. I mean, he will, uh, when he will try and uh, when he will start and get experience with it, he will see that it was worth it. But you have to initiate it. So, for example, if I go back to the hubs that we are creating, I just take funds from the institute and I give it to a hub. 
I give it to this group of people and I say to them, you know what? Let's start artificially. You know, I will pay for your retreat. I'll give you one day retreat, go somewhere outside of the building, outside of your routine work, sit together and talk science. And I'll fund it, okay? Which is not a lot of money. And they said, well, why not? Let's try it. So they do that. And after that, they come back and said, hey, it was great. I've learned what my neighbor is doing. I didn't know that he's doing this and that and he's using this and that machinery or this and that uh, reagents or whatever, and I can use it. So he, he suddenly he sees that working together is beneficial. It's very trivial, but I am trying and we are, we are pushing it very hard now to initiate people getting together, working together. It usually starts by, you know, skeptic. people are very skeptical about it. Okay, let's do it, you're pushing it. Eventually, again, I'm talking after one year of experience with this hub, it looks very good. Well, no, not all of them. We have established 12 hubs. Not all of them were great success. And probably I'm going to, to you know, disintegrate a few. But most of them, it seems really uh, Good. Let me add another dimension because the complexity gets more and more uh, because you need lots more money for complex research, lots more money for complex organizations. That means you have to spend a lot of your time and each scientist has to spend time and, uh, with people that aren't fellow scientists. So we're going to line up interviews with your other scientists. They're going to interview. They're spending time on that. That wasn't something they once had to do. You have to spend, I assume, quite a bit of time meeting the general community and teaching them the importance of this fundamental science to make it relevant, the, the innovations you're doing are relevant to them, to their cancer, to their prostate, to their broken spines or whatever it, uh, else it is. That's a lot of time. How do you get that willingness to, of the people to do that? Well, you see, you, you are going to interview I don't know how many people. I don't think we had one. We have to ask the, the secretaries, but I don't think we had one example that we gave a phone. We called someone, one of our members, and we tell them, hey, Howard is coming. We want you to, to spend some time with him. No one said no. We, we don't have them. We are aware to the fact that in order to do our science, we have to go explain our science to the public, tell them how, you know, the things that we do, how good they are, how important they are, how interesting they are, and people are willing to spend the time doing that. That's not too much to ask. And again, as I'm saying, there was no problem, I'm sure, of people joining this effort. The same is true in, in, in other duties. I mean, well, in my case, you are right. I mean, as a chairman of the Institute, I have to devote a lot of time into that and my, my, my own scientific work for sure suffered. I had to, well I did cut my lab for about, from about uh, 10 students that I had. We have now uh, five students, well six. So my lab is smaller because of that. And uh, the same is true for, for other department chairmen. So obviously they have to devote more time and uh, their work suffers a little bit for, for the time that uh, they are there in, in, in this, uh, in this uh, uh, role. But, uh, you know, if you think it's important, if you think that what you are doing has significance and uh, you are willing, uh, you know, to share it with other things that you are doing, that's, that, you know, it's a la vie. Well, I think you're, I mean, you're, I think you're clearly on the cutting edge, not only on your individual science, but in my work, which is understanding partly how institutions and networking work, that you're really in the forefront. And I thank you for the interview, and I thank you for your innovations in science and in institution. Well, thank you, Howard, and I hope you're going to enjoy really your stay and the talk with, uh, with the people. With I the look scientists. forward to it. I really do. Thank you.